Should you buy Bioshock in 2022? Bioshock is one of those games that had such a great reputation, I've been told how great it is, but for whatever reason I always delayed playing it until now. Bioshock released back in 2007, 15 years ago, that's a lot of years. So a first person shooter with powers set in an atmospheric underwater city crumbling right as you arrive, what's not to like? But does Bioshock hold up to today's standards? Is it still that incredible game that is fresh and iconic for a new player? How does the gameplay hold up? Is the story as great as everyone says, did Bioshock really do the impossible and make FPS games fresh again? Let's find out. No spoilers in this review, at least none that requires context to understand. Welcome to Classic Game Reviews where we review games. Let's get into this. Bioshock drops you right into the action. One minute you're swimming, the next you're being attacked by enraged individuals with no explanation and it's awesome. The city is gorgeous yet it instills a sense of dread that will follow you throughout the game as you slowly uncover what happened and what you have to do to beat the game. It's incredible how atmospheric Bioshock actually is, arguably the best part of the game. You can practically breathe in the stench of dead bodies around every corner. You get a wrench, and your first plasmid, and off you go. Plasmid is your powers. That's the opening, and straight away I could tell that I was going to play something that's special. Throughout the game you're almost always talking to a man called Atlas, who gives a tidbit of information to get your imagination going through every section of the game, filling you with dread but excitement. The world does the rest for the storytelling aspect, every area is brimming with detail, telling stories left, right and centre, while still leaving you to interpret it the way you want to. I now understand why so many fans of Bioshock was disappointed with Bioshock Infinite, because Infinite seriously lacks this creepy horror atmosphere, and while Infinite is still a great game, it really doesn't hold up when it comes to atmosphere or environmental storytelling telling compared to the original. I think of Infinite now as the Michael Bay of Bioshock, I think that's a fair assumption. Now with every environment there is a story, but it's unfinished, it's time for you to leave your mark on these areas, and it's up to you how you go about it. There is a surprising amount of weapons, plasmids and secret entrances you can use to get through Bioshock's levels. Pistols, shotguns, crossbows, fire, electricity, telekinesis among many other options are available to you, and it really shows that Bioshock was really trying to leave a new mark on the FPS genre, and I think they nailed it. Shotguns are powerful powerful but slow, pistols are quick but weak, and the grenade launcher is, well, it's, it's a grenade launcher. And it's so damn cool, but none of this would matter if the level design and AI aren't up to the same standards. And Wow, I, I loved it. Now, Bioshock is showing its age after 15 years, but it's still so much fun to play. Levels are masterfully crafted while not being too linear. Every corner will have something new and interesting to explore, offering new loot abilities and additions to your arsenal, but this comes at a cost. Around every corner, there is a chance multiple enemies will be there to punish you for even trying to find that extra loot, making it a big deal to stray from the path. But if you do play Bioshock, absolutely do it. Those moments were some of my favorite favourites. Exploring a business only to find two dead bodies with some cool loot and a cool audio diary giving you some insight into why these people are now corpses immerses you even further into this wonderfully crafted world. Each level has their own floor full of different rooms, toilets, basements and traps. You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you don't explore every little area. It truly is incredible what's been made here. But at the end of the day, if what you're going up against isn't fun to take on, then the game would be boring and I'm happy to say Bioshock is not boring. The AI and and various enemies you face are actually quite smart. If you set an enemy on fire, they are going to scream and jump into a puddle, desperately trying to put the flames out. You turn an enemy on his allies and they all freak out, terrified as to why their friend is now trying to kill them. Those are just two examples of how awesome the AI is in Bioshock, and to me, at this point, it's the, the bare minimum, but most games don't even do that. Enemies charge you when you haven't got your shotgun out. Grenade enemies run as far away from you as they can while chucking grenades at you, hoping to blow you up. And then you have the spider slide. I hate those guys. They're pretty tough to take out and crawl all over the walls, adding a new vertical element to the shootouts, and they are relentless. Oh, oh God, you sick fuck, let me out of there! <laughs> Then you have the Big Daddy, who are bloody terrifying at the start of the game. Their footsteps shake the ground immediately, making you crouch and consider your best options. Do I take this guy out, or should I let him pass, but then I won't get the upgrade I desperately need? Every decision you make is vital to your upgrade, so you better make the right choice. Oh, and it was super satisfying getting the achievement for defeating all the Big Daddies, or at least the achievement associated with doing that. When I got that achievement, mate, I was so happy, I was just like, yes, yes, I'm a beast, I'm so good at this 
fucking game. So this is all great, but how's progression? I and mean, once again, there's not many negatives to this game, guys. It's absolutely nailed here. Every time you think, okay, that's it. No more upgrades, no more weapons, a bunch more come running at you, offering countless new ways to take on each encounter. And it's actually kind of overwhelming sometimes, but once you get used to it, you have so many options, and I can't wait to play through Bioshock again just to try the abilities I never use, because there's that many of them. You have your plasmids that you can upgrade to new and powerful abilities, as well as having tonics, which can give you passive upgrades so hacking is less of a risk, or you can take more fire damage. Oh, and speaking of hacking, Bioshock has its own little hacking minigame, and I didn't mind it too much. It's not the most creative thing ever, but it's pretty damn fun, and after a while, I'd say at the halfway point, I did get pretty tired of it and opted for destroying cameras or using quick hacks to unlock safes, etc, because it does get a bit tedious, especially in the late game, since it can feel quite cheap with the amount of time you're actually given, but that's just me, and I may just suck at the minigame, which is more than likely the case. You can also upgrade your weapons, making your shotgun more powerful and quicker to shoot, or you can make yourself invulnerable to your grenade launcher explosions, making it less of a risk to use in close range encounters. I was really surprised by all these additions, and I haven't mentioned them all, because I want to keep some things a surprise for anyone that hasn't played the game yet, but I went into Bioshock expecting a tight, linear horror game with a little bit of action, but you get all of that and a lot more with it, and it's such a surprise, but the biggest surprise for me was the story. Maybe the power got to him. Maybe he just decided he didn't like people. Whichever way you slice it, Bioshock's story really caught me off guard. I knew about the twist, but I didn't understand the context behind that twist. And I really was pleasantly surprised by how it was executed and how that twist affected the gameplay. I haven't really experienced anything like that in an FPS game before, and I'm just mad at myself for not playing it years ago. Bioshock's story isn't a masterpiece, but it's the perfect story for the kind of game Bioshock is, letting the world tell most of the story while the characters and traditional style of storytelling just fill in the gaps, leaving you more shocked and surprised so many times when it comes to character motivations, how the city itself was built, and the consequences of them. Ambition. You ask all the questions, but you don't ask the right questions. That's the best way I can put it. Sure, I think Bioshock Infinite has a more fulfilling story, especially with the ending, and overall it's better quality, in my opinion, and, you know, story is subjective, and what we get from the original Bioshock, especially for 2007, is pretty damn incredible, and really shows how far the developers really wanted to push in ways that most FPS games wouldn't even dare to imagine. I just wish the industry followed suit, rather than releasing Call of Duty 57 advanced uh, uh, Nerf Guns 2, or whatever they're gonna call the next one. Bioshock is a phenomenal example of what the gaming medium can do when telling stories, and the boundaries that no other medium can break. This is a wonderfully crafted story, and while its age is obvious, it's undeniably one of the most groundbreaking FPS games that's been seen so far in the industry's short lifespan. And I think the story that was told really can't be told in any other way than using the gaming medium, you have to get so invested into it, so I really don't think it's worth recreating. Uh, edit they just announced a netflix show wow a netflix movie and okay i'm literally just putting this in right now why Fuck. thanks for getting to the end of the review be sure to check out some of my other reviews because many of the games that i've reviewed now will be cheap as a pint these days please buy this game and give it a shot it may take you a minute to get into it but it's worth it in the end providing some amazing memorable moments and if a developer of bioshock is watching somehow just know Bioshock is incredible and I do think it's worth buying in 2022, 15 years later. Thank you for watching.